Hi guys, my name is Megan from the blog wilsonhomestead.com and today I want to share with you a healthy jello recipe. Jello packets from the store are just absolutely full of chemicals, they're full of artificial dyes that can be really harmful. They have all kinds of unpronounceable ingredients, which is a huge red flag for me. And especially since I went gluten-free, I've learned about a lot of things that like red dye number 40, not only is it just super unhealthy, it actually has gluten in it. So if you're somebody who's gluten intolerant, you might not realize that things like red dye number 40 are actually something you want to avoid. But jello from the store just has a lot of chemicals and a lot of processed sugars and stuff that I really don't want my kids to be eating as a snack. It also can be made with gelatin from conventional animals fed a really poor diet, which is also really bad. It's going to be full of hormones and all kinds of crazy stuff. It's insane to me that such a tiny little packet of jello mix can be so bad for you. So this is made with gelatin from grass-fed cattle. So the gelatin is actually really healthy. It's got a lot of protein. There's also evidence that gelatin may reduce joint pain, increase brain function, and it's also really healthy for your skin. So not only is this just a good protein source, but also has some amazing health benefits as well. You just wanna make sure that you're using actual beef gelatin, not collagen peptides, because it won't gel the same way. Both collagen and gelatin are great sources of protein and are known to benefit digestion, hair, nails, and joints. They contain the same amino acids, but they each behave differently. So gelatin is actually something that's commonly used in diets like the GAPS diet and AIP, which is audio, autoimmune paleo, and SCD, which is specific carbohydrate diet. So gel gelatin digests more slowly than collagen and can actually coat the small intestine, which can help with healing the gut, which is pretty awesome. So I get my beef gelatin from Azure Standard. They have a really great price on it. I actually buy it in bulk. This is just beef gelatin, 100% unflavored. This is a pound, but I actually got a five pound bag last time I ordered, and I'm just finishing up these, this little bag. But don't worry, anything that I can link, I will link down in the description box below so that it's easily accessible to you. But let's get right into this recipe. So actually, my favorite juice to use in this recipe is the leftover syrup from my home canned fruit. So I can a lot of pears and peaches and plums and it's all canned in a syrup. And up until I knew about making this homemade gelatin, that syrup a lot of times just went to waste. But I found that it's a really great way to use it up so nothing from my canning goes to waste and it's also a really great way to get some extra protein into your diet with the gelatin. Plus, kids absolutely just love jello. <laughs> I do too. So I have a quart here of what was pear syrup. So I'll be using this. And when I can fruit, I actually use the lowest amount of sugar. So they have different degrees of amounts of sugar in it. The pear recipe called for a light syrup, but I actually used an extra light syrup. So I go one lower than what the recipe actually calls for, just so that I get less sugar in my children's diet. Sometimes I'll use honey. Sometimes I won't add any sugar at all, especially since we usually add fruit to other things like yogurt. So we'll have a bowl of yogurt with the fruit and some maple syrup. And so it doesn't really matter if the, the fruit was in a syrup. This did have some sugar. I use organic cane sugar, so even though it is sugar, it's not processed to re really refined sugar. It's at least organic and it's good cane sugar. And then I also have about half of a quart of plum syrup, and this was completely unsweetened. And so I know a lot of people don't can fruit, and so if you don't have fruit syrup to use up, you can use some fruit juice and you can add honey or maple syrup. If you don't have this syrup, you can use apple juice, grape juice. If it's not sweetened, you would use about three tablespoons of honey or maple syrup for this amount of juice. If you're using six cups, you use about three tablespoons of either honey or maple syrup. So you can really, really play around with this recipe, which is something I absolutely love. So you can use a combination of juice and water, you can use the syrup from your canning, you can use straight juice, you can use unsweetened juice, and add some stuff, it's just like completely flexible. So I have a quart and a half of juices. I'm not gonna add any syrup or honey to these because this one is already sweetened, so it, these will get mixed and it'll kind of balance it out and make it really tasty. So this is about six cups of juice. So most recipes actually call for less gelatin than I use. So if this was, a lot of recipes I've seen, if, if they're using six cups of juice, they'll use three tablespoons of gelatin. But I actually add, like to add in a little more. I just feel like since this is just really healthy, it's full of protein, it's actually what is the healthiest piece in this recipe. So I will add like four or five tablespoons of this to this amount of juice. And that's the other thing that's really, you can just play around with is the amount of gelatin. So my recipe today is six cups of 
juice that doesn't need to be sweet. It's already to the flavor that we like it. And then use four to five tablespoons of gelatin. I'm actually gonna use five today just because I'd like to add more gelatin. <laughs> but you can make it with less and see how you like it. And the next time you can add more, it's just really, you can do whatever you like best. The gelatin is going to need to be bloomed in cold water to thicken the gelatin granules and then it'll be dissolved in hot liquid. So you're first gonna add it to cold liquid and then once it's combined in that, then you add the hot liquid to that. So it's important to do both because if you don't add it to cold water, it won't work properly. But if you only add it to cold water, it will bloom, but it will be really clumpy and thick and it won't dissolve. It can only dissolve in hot water. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just going to pour off like half of this. I use about an eighth of a cup to a fourth of the amount of liquid I'm using. So it doesn't have to be a super specific amount. I just use a little bit of the juice I'm using. So I'm going to pour a little bit of this cold juice into an eight by eight baking dish. And then I'm gonna measure out five tablespoons of gelatin and put it in the baking dish with the cold juice. And I'm gonna use a whisk and whisk it up really well. And I'm just gonna let it sit for a little while while I heat up the other juice on the stove. So then I'm gonna take the rest of the liquid that's from my plum juice jar and all the liquid from my pear juice jar. I'm gonna pour it in a medium sized pot and I'm going to heat it up on the stove. If you're using unsweetened juice, you're gonna to wanna to add in the honey or whatever you're using at this point so it can dissolve as it's heating. So after you've added your gelatin to the cold juice, it should have thickened quite a bit. And then after you get your the rest of your juice heated up, you're going to slowly pour it into the gelatin as you're whisking it pretty quickly. And it will be a lot thinner at this point. It won't really look like jello at all. You can also add in chunks of fresh fruit, which is a really fun thing to do. I usually don't just because we don't normally have fresh fruit around besides bananas, but strawberries would be a really delicious thing to add to this. You just want to make sure the entire surface of the fruit is coated in jello so that it actually sticks in it. And then I'm going to carefully transfer my baking dish into the refrigerator and it's going to sit there for a couple hours. It usually takes two, three hours. You can leave it there for longer. I've done this a couple times where I make this in the evening and then just sits overnight and by the morning it's ready. And then you can cut it up and take it out. Normally what I do is I just leave it in the dish and I cut out squares as we want to eat them for snacks. You can cut them in fun shapes. You can use a scoop to make them a little bit more round instead of square. You can do all sorts of different things with them. Normally I will add this along with another little snacky item like some cheese to my daughter's snack. I actually really enjoy eating this as a snack myself. I guess I'm still a kid at heart because I love jello. <laughs> but since we're using healthy gelatin that has a lot of protein and amazing health benefits, I do not feel nearly as guilty for eating jello for a snack. Another really great idea for this is to add in elderberry syrup. So it will be not only having protein and health benefits from the gelatin, but it will also have the immune boosting qualities of the elderberry syrup. Plus I think elderberry syrup just tastes really good anyway, so it will improve the flavor a lot. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask me down in the comments below. And don't forget, I will link everything that I can down in the description box. But thank you for watching and I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys enjoy this jello recipe too. If you make this, be sure to take a picture of it and tag me on Instagram. But I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.